Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Boat. My name is Kelly. I'm Trevor. Hey, today we've got something really cool, a brand new build. That's right. This is going to be a purpose-built GX460 2017. Stay tuned. All right, bro. So this is going to be a really cool purpose-built GX. What exactly is the purpose? So the purpose is my wife and I are starting another venture overlanding North America. In that venture, we are importing trailers from Australia. These are off-road hyper campers. It's really gonna fill a gap in the market right now. Um, they're really cool. You can check them out at overlandingnorthamerica.com. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. And this GX, uh, my wife's daily driver, we are going to build this thing out to make it the ultimate tower. Nice. And I know that we were at Overland Expo Mountain West and we explored a lot of options in the off-road trailer realm. And uh, yeah. I think these new uh, Lifestyle Overland trailers are going to kind of fit a niche that isn't exploited right now. Yeah, yeah, there really is. I mean, there's a lot of great trailers out there. I cannot say uh, anything bad about a lot of trailers out there, but there's the utility style trailers with rooftop tents and then there's like the bigger trailers. There's nothing kind of in between, you know? And so this is filling that gap of, you know, where towing capacity is a 5,000 pound, 6,500 pound, you know, the midsize SUV, the midsize truck can tow. Let's get this bill going. Do it. The first difference between the GX and the 4Runner is the KDSS has to be off the ground altogether, all four wheels. So we're gonna put it on jack stands. We are going to start with the rear because the rear is gonna have more droop, so make sure it's up high enough in the rear and then move to the front. Now that the vehicle's all jacked up, the KDSS system is a really cool system. Uh, it's a hydraulic sway bar, connects the tires to each other and everything. Um, and it is a really cool on-road and off-road ride. Um, but this is the control. We need to essentially neutralize this. Uh, and that's why we had to jack up all four is to get all the droop out. We're gonna neutralize uh, the control box here and we'll show you how it starts with a 12 millimeter. Now that we have the skid plate off, we're gonna use a Sharpie to mark on the bolts. We're gonna do two counterwise, uh, counterclockwise uh, rotations on there and I'll neutralize the system. We just effectively neutralized the KDSS system so now we are going to be able to get full articulation uh, without any pressure so it's going to give full droop there's not going to be any pushback from that system. Now that we have the tires off we're going to go ahead and start on the suspension. First things first is we're going to disconnect the brake line from the upper control arm then we're going to disconnect the uh, ball joint on the upper control arm and then take out the bolt for the upper control arm. So we're gonna take out the upper control arm and then remove the strut. A very typical Toyota issue on the upper control arms is the through bolt coming up towards the battery on the driver's side, always gets hung up. This time, luckily, it's just kind of a wiring clump. It's a bunch of wires clumped together into a, I don't know, a bracket that's bolted to the frame. Trev's gonna pull that bolt out. Hopefully a thing just slides to the side and we can pull the bolt right out. Well, that failed. Trev's got to pull the battery and hopefully access the bolt that way. That actually worked so well that Trevor uh, got it out before I was even able to get video of it. So it is out though. The upper control arm is out on the driver's side, which is always the pain in the ass side. So we are moving right along. Today we're installing the Ironman 4x4 Foam Cell Pro Suspension Stage 3. Uh, this thing is really the best bang for the buck you can get uh, in suspensions, best all around suspension that I have found. Uh, this is in my 4Runner, this is in Kelly's Taco. We have tried numerous suspensions and this is truly the best all around suspension that we have found, best bang for the buck. The front coilover is in and you guys cannot argue that freaking Iron Man 4x4 green on these coils. Just really just, man, that thing is so mint. But uh, now we're moving on to installing the upper control arm. I'm not sure if Trevor and I are just getting really, really good at doing suspensions and upper control arms because that was by far the easiest 
upper control arm install we've ever done. It just slid right in. Now we're going to finish getting the upper control arm in and button this thing up. Couple quick reminders with the ABS line, you have to make sure that it's on top of the upper control arm, not going underneath where the bolt is. That could be really bad later on down the road when you're off-roading. Uh, the other thing is the factory mount uh, that holds that on. It's got this little tab. You just gotta bend that out so it's out of the way and then we can bolt it onto the top of the upper control arm. Almost forgot the hole, uh, the factory hole is slightly smaller than uh, the bolt that goes uh, onto the Iron Man upper control arm. So we're going to use a 516 drill bit and get that opened up. We've gotten the driver's side all done, the coilover, the upper control arm, it all went in really, really smooth, surprisingly smooth. And now we're moving on to the passenger side and then we're doing the rear. Working on the passenger side upper control arm and we had to take the front air dam kind of thing off, um, which is really easy, pop caps. But, and there's just a few AC lines that the bolt is hitting. I got it pushed out as far as I could, then got that off and now it should be easy just to mm, kind of get it around those hoses. It's the washer now, try it. Oh. Out all the way. Yep. So what'd you do, bro? So I may have dropped a bolt into the anti-seize. It was a small bolt, and I don't have an extra one. So going fishing. So you want to get everything covered in anti-seize? Everything covered in anti-seize. It's okay. They're your tools. <laughs> all right. Who found it? Uh. Well. We didn't lose it. We knew it was in the anti-seize, <laughs> so, uh. so it wasn't lost. But there it is. Moving to the back of the vehicle, first thing we're gonna do is remove the shocks. Then we're gonna disconnect the rear sway bar to get the springs out. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace the track bar, also known as the pan hard bar. This is gonna be the plan of attack for the rear end. We're going to disconnect the rear sway bar from the bolts that hold the sway bar onto the brackets because we have extensions for that. Then we're going to lower the axle down. We're gonna pull the coils out, disconnect the track bar, pull the track bar out, replace the track bar, put the new coils in, lift it back up, and then reconnect the sway bar with the spacers. Let's see how it works. All right, we got the track bar, pan hard bar in, the coils are in, and now we're going to do the sway bar spacer. This spacer goes on here like so, and then the sway bar mounts here. Then the factory bottom clamp goes on, and you replace the factory bolts with these aftermarket Iron Man bolts that are much longer to make up that extra space. The final step, the grand finale, the rear foam cell pro, it's going in right now.
All right, we've pretty much completed the install. All we have to do is button up the back end. We've got the shock, we've got the coil, we've got the sway bar spacers, everything's installed, the new track bar, everything's installed in the rear. We just gotta button it up and then put the tires back on, put it on the ground, torque everything down, and take KDSS. it for- KDSS? Yeah, KDSS. Gotta, for, gotta make sure we don't mess up the KDSS. We gotta turn that thing back on. Yep, so that's all it takes is uh, a couple turns with a 10 mil and that's back reinstalled. Yeah, should be pretty quick from here on out. Which is ne not too soon, because I don't think you have any more sweat to sweat out. I have no more. No, no, Arizona, trying to kill you. Always. Redoing the KDSS. Two turns clockwise, put the lines back together. Skip plate, and then we're done. One ton. Ah, ah, ah. Just right on the marks? Yeah, just snugged it right up. Boom. They bought the one? Yep. Torque spec, good and tight. All right, that's it. Let's see how she looks. All right, guys, so that was the complete install, really primarily focusing on the KD, KDD. KDSS. <laughs> Say it with me. I just add a bunch of letters all together. <laughs> Can There's I buy a, a vowel? K, a D, and an S, and then pick the number of letters you would like to add in that. <laughs> but that was focusing on the KDSS system. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> and then also getting into the track bar and the rear sway bar uh, extensions because those are something yeah. that no one else has really covered. So we want to make sure that we get that in the GX suspension for the from uh, Iron Man 4x4. Yep, that's a full stage three uh, suspension. Um, I think it turned out really well. I kind of wish the front was up a little higher. However, once we get the trailer sat on there, it's probably gonna level out. Yeah, right now it's sitting about an inch and a quarter higher in the rear yeah. than the front. However, like Trev said, the trailer should settle that. And it is new, so this, the suspension will settle. Yeah, so. settle a little bit. And also, maybe it's a Baja runner, you yep. know? Set up a little rake. Baja, I think, is the other rig. Is it the other one? Yeah, yeah it is the other rig. You could drive sorry. Baja backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we really hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Follow us on IG. It's a bunch of underscore. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.